Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about what makes writing scary. So last year I started working on a book that I didn't originally think was going to be a horror story. The book is about a girl whose little brother goes missing and it essentially just follows her on her adventure as she recruits her friends and goes to try to find her brother. Her brother's disappearance turns out to be linked to some paranormal things like some ghosts and some creepy ex-circus people that have the ability to do things relating to ghosts. When I started writing it, I thought it was going to be a straight mystery because nothing in it is particularly scary except for the fact that ghosts exist. I wrote the whole book for NaNoWriMo my freshman year of college and it was an absolute dumpster fire. Melodrama in that book was insane. I think that there were five deaths, there was a ritual sacrifice, there was a drug lord, there was an apartment fire, there was a bunch of orphans, there was a hotel fire. Five people in this small town go missing and the FBI doesn't take notice and one of them is a fully grown adult. So I'm writing this book and I'm workshopping it in my fiction writing class in college. And every time that I submit it to class, my professor slash advisor is telling me that this book is trying to be a horror novel, but I'm just not letting it be one. So before that, I never liked horror. I get scared pretty easily, so I tried to avoid it. I definitely didn't write horror. This was the first story that I even delved slightly into things that were vaguely supernatural. But the more that my advisor kept telling me that this book wanted to be a horror book, the more curious I got about whether or not I'd actually be able to make it a horror book. So I decided to give it a shot because I'd never written anything scary before and I wanted to see if I I could do it. The first thing I did was I started reading horror. I knew Stephen King was scary because I'd watched it, but I'd never read anything of his, and so I decided to start there. I read Needful Things and I listened to Pet Cemetery on audiobook whenever I walked to class, and both of those were very scary, but I enjoyed them. I wasn't going for Stephen King level horror, I was shooting for more Stranger Things level horror, um, but I figured starting with Stephen King would be good because that would set the bar very high for how scary I wanted the book to be, and knowing me I would probably ease off of it a little bit, which put me in the right territory for making the book scary. Also my subject matter wasn't inherently scary. Ghosts are not scary in books, I learned, because you just describe them as people so they don't seem out of the ordinary because you're describing them as walking, talking, breathing humans. So long story short, this started a year-long quest of me trying to figure out what makes writing scary to turn my original idea into a scarier version of itself. In this video, I'm going to tell you all of the practical and actionable things that you can do to make your writing scarier if you are trying to write horror and don't know where to start. There are four things that make writing scary. First, the feeling of not having control or being powerless in a particular situation. If you have your agency taken away, you are at the mercy of your surroundings, and if those surroundings are dangerous, that is very scary because there's nothing that you can do to guard yourself against those scary surroundings. Think of a haunted corn maze, right? Not only are you in a maze and you don't know how to get out of the maze because you're lost in the maze, but then there are things waiting for you in the maze, often things with chainsaws, and that's very scary because not only do you not know when the things with chainsaws are going to come out of the maze and run after you, but you also don't know how to get out of the maze because it's a maze. In a haunted corn maze, you don't have any control over your surroundings and no agency because you don't actually know how to get out of the maze. This results in a degree of powerlessness and vulnerability that is very scary to people, especially if you know that something dangerous can happen to you. Number two, the unknown, and not knowing what's going to happen to you. If you have no idea what's going to happen to you, it's also scarier than if you do know what's going to happen to you because once again you're vulnerable and at the mercy of your surroundings. Think of a normal haunted house, a non-corn maze haunted house. When you're wandering through the haunted house, you have no idea what's waiting around the corner for you as you're moving through the house. It could be a zombie, it could be a dentist, it can be a guy with a chainsaw. There are a lot of guys with chainsaws in haunted houses. The point is, you don't know what's waiting for you, which is what makes it scary because it could be anything. Again, this taps into the feeling of being vulnerable, which is really scary to people because, again, you have no control. If you knew what was going to happen in a haunted house, if you knew exactly what to expect every single time you go through a particular corridor, it wouldn't be scary because you'd be able to prepare yourself for it and you would be expecting it. Number three, something being slightly off and not being able to put your finger on what it is. There's something inherently creepy about something being almost familiar, but not quite familiar enough for it to feel real. With humans, this is called the uncanny valley because faces look almost human, but not quite human, and therefore they're extremely off-putting to people when they look at them. This is also the case with surroundings. In a lot of horror movies and books, they change the surroundings just slightly to make them very off-putting and scary because they seem familiar, but something's not quite right about them. While this might not be flat out scary, it's very unnerving and creepy, which is the right kind of atmosphere that you want to be going for in your horror story. And last but not least, four, brutal things happening to you. The threat of meeting a really 
undesirable death is pretty scary to people. This is why you're scared of being caught when a guy chases you through a corn maze with a chainsaw. It's because you're afraid of getting hacked to death by the chainsaw. In media, this is scary when this threat is posed to characters that you not only care about, but see yourself in. If you're able to connect to the characters, you are gonna be much more afraid of things happening to them and therefore the stakes are gonna be higher because you would not wanna meet the, their untimely fate yourself if it were you in that particular book, movie, or TV show. All right, now I'm gonna get into four examples of things that scare me and explain to you why using the four things that I just talked about. This following section contains spoilers for Silence of the Lambs, Us, Coraline, and Pet Cemetery. So skip the section if you haven't seen those movies and don't wanna be spoiled. So first movie that really scared me was Silence of the Lambs. Hannibal Lecter from the beginning of the movie is painted out to be an extremely dangerous person. Yet when you meet him for the first time, he is standing pretty dignified, not throwing himself against the bars of the cages, but instead just standing there and speaking to Clarice like a fairly normal person. The entire time he's pretty unpredictable because viewers don't really know how to place him because he's not immediately insane and psychotic on screen, but there's also something wrong with him and you don't really know how he's gonna react in certain situations because you know that he's dangerous, but also he doesn't look dangerous in every single scene. Perhaps one of the scariest scenes in the movies is towards the end when Clarice is looking for Buffalo Bill and all the lights are off and he can see her with his night vision goggles but she can't see anything and she's wandering through the dark. You know that Buffalo Bill is a bad guy who's very scary and does very bad things to people that Clarice wouldn't want to be done to her and you as the viewer would definitely not want to be done to yourself. Because you connect to Clarice, you also don't want this fate to befall her. So watching Buffalo Bill be able to stalk her with his night vision goggles and her having absolutely no idea takes away all agency and control that she has in this situation, which is what makes it really scary. Clarice is totally powerless, whereas Buffalo Bill has power. And this is scary to watch because all of her agency has been taken away. Another movie that scared me was Jordan Peele's horror movie, Us, which came out in 2019. I think this movie is scary because not only do the viewers not know what's gonna happen to the characters, but the characters have no idea who this other family is and why they're stalking them. You don't know who this family is. You don't know why they're following them. You don't know why every single person in this society seems to have a counterpart. You don't know why these counterparts are creepy. You don't know where they've come from. All of this unknown is compounded because it's really hard to know what's gonna happen to these characters and how they're gonna escape this situation because society is falling apart around them. This goes back to the first type of horror, which is taking away people's agency. Even when the family tries to escape, their safe house is no longer safe. Society is falling apart around them. They don't know what to do because all of their backup plans keep falling through and they're just at the mercy of this family that is very dangerous and following them. Another story I find scary, even though I hold it very near and dear to my heart, is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. This story is not overtly horrific, like the previous two that I just talked about. When Coraline goes through the door and meets her other mother and other father, everything is kind of familiar because they mirror her two parents in real life and the house in real life, except that things are a little bit brighter and shinier, and also they all have buttons for eyes. Even though they act and talk like their counterparts in real life, they're slightly off because of this button thing and also the way that they act. As the story progresses, they get more and more different from their counterparts in real life, but that's what makes the story so creepy, is that the situation and the characters are kind of like what Coraline is familiar with and what would be familiar to the readers, except something is off about them and you can't pinpoint exactly what it is until later on in the book. This is creepy because it makes readers and viewers very uncomfortable. Towards the end, it gets more overtly scary, but especially in the beginning, this whole idea of the uncanny valley, but more of a, an uncanny valley for situations is very present and makes the book very scary. And finally, brutal things happening to you and characters you care about is scary. The Stephen King book Pet Cemetery spends a lot of time at the beginning helping you connect to its main characters so that by the end you are very invested in all the horrible things that happen to them and it really makes you feel very, very bad. You care about Ellie and you care about Gage so that when Gage gets hit by a truck, you feel really sad because you don't want your kid to get hit by a truck and you don't want to get hit by a truck and because you care about Gage, you don't want him to get hit by a truck either. You can almost imagine how terrible getting hit by a truck would feel, so you really feel for the character and that makes the story stick with you in a more horrifying way. Another way that this book is scary is that whole uncanny valley slash something's off thing that I was just talking about. When people get buried in the pet cemetery and come back, there's something off about them and it's not really clear what's off about them until they all start brutally murdering each other in different ways. So with all of that said, what are some practical things that you can do to make your writing scarier? One, 
Think about what scares you and why. Make a list of things that scare you, like the one that I just made, and pick them apart and figure out what it is about that particular book, movie, or TV show that makes it so scary to you. Once you figure out what it is that makes it scary, replicate that in your writing. Chances are that what scares you is not so different than what scares other people, so if you can figure out how to scare yourself, I pretty much guarantee you that you're gonna scare somebody else. Two. Make something be off about your situation and surroundings. Use the uncanny value in creating your villain. Have them be almost human, but not quite. Have there be something off about the way that they talk, about the way that their face looks, that makes them just a little bit unnerving for your readers to either watch or read about. Do the same thing with your surroundings. Change something in your surroundings to make them feel familiar, but not so familiar that they feel comfortable. Three, take away all of your character's power in whatever situation you come up with. Make sure that your character has no control over their environment and make that environment terrifying. Give your character no escape from whatever it is that they're running from. Make a list of all the things that you would be able to count on in that situation. Would you be able to call for help? Would there be a safe location you can run to? Get rid of all of those things for your protagonist and make them stuck. Destroy any way your character has to escape from the situation and you've automatically made it that much scarier. Four, and this one's super important, write characters that your readers can relate to. What makes horror scary is that you can see yourself in that position and you would never want to be in that position. It's hard for you to see yourself in that situation if there are no characters that you can relate to and no characters in which you see yourself in some way. Make sure your readers care about the terrible things that are happening to your character because that's what's gonna haunt them, that's what's gonna make this story stick in their minds, and that's what's gonna keep them from being able to sleep after they read your story. Five, up the stakes by making the threat really scary and brutal. If someone was chasing you through a corn maze offering you free popcorn, it would not be as scary as if somebody is chasing you through a corn maze with a chainsaw. Odds are you're going to want popcorn more than being hacked to death by a chainsaw, so you're going to run faster from the chainsaw guy than you would from the popcorn guy. Your readers are going to squirm if they themselves would not want to face the same fate that your characters are facing. Think of something painful or brutal and use that in your story to make sure that your stakes are high and to keep your protagonist running really fast away from whatever it is that's threatening them. And six, if it scares you while you're writing, you're on the right track. If thinking about your story scares you, then it's probably gonna scare other people once they read it. Use yourself as a guide when writing horror. If you get scared at everything like I do, it might not be super helpful, but that's what beta readers are for. And it's always helpful to be able to trust yourself and your judgment when it comes to this at the beginning, because it'll keep you sort of on the right track until you can figure out where it needs to be heightened or not. That's it for today's video. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you agree with what I said about horror or is there a different way that you approach it? Let me know, I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so that when I post a new video about writing, you will hear about it.